Holy Trinity Church. Uh, thank you so much for braving the weather this morning. As usual, this service is recorded in audio and video. Our first hymn this morning is number 85, God of Grace and God of Glory. Forgive us for all which is past, and grant that you may serve you in the 
have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
epistle that's taken from the book of James, chapter, uh, chapter 13, uh, beginning to read in chapter 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is, is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is pure. Then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without the trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart. This is the word of the Lord. I will you Our gradual king is on a sheet. Put peace into each other's hands.
from Tangent Art Old Testament reading, which is a very vivid and recognisable set of thought processes of someone who feels threatened or fearful. Helen read it very well and is very easy to see in that some of the political motivations of today. But as Christians, we have the promise of life with Christ after death. And that salvation involves accepting his gift and we ourselves give of ourselves in return. The voice in the wisdom reading is the flip side. It is the challenge to Jesus' teaching, which reiterates the temptations of his post-baptism tests by the devil. It is the voice of those who can't see or hope beyond what they have now. As I looked down at the sea, the wisdom that we heard from James was slowly fitting into place. Wisdom is not top of the subject taught or discussed, and it might be unwise to think that I can unravel it any more than any others. James today hits us with what perhaps our petty motivations are and how they stand apart from God's wisdom. We have a reminder that wisdom and discernment are close cousins when it comes to making wise and godly choices. We also have comforting and assuring words affirming the faithfulness of God. That wisdom that James writes of is the gift of God, not the achievement of humanity. So in choosing the way of true wisdom, we are essentially choosing God. In our Gospel, we hear that Jesus is teaching his disciples, but they don't seem to be understanding. This passage is the second time Mark reports Christ teaching the disciples about his death and resurrection. And indeed, Christ is concentrating on it exclusively. He did not want anyone to know as he passed through Galilee. But we hear that the disciples are arguing about something else. It is though they are still walking a path, thinking that Jesus will become a wise messianic king, the vision of the transfiguration that were a few verses earlier in that chapter of Mark. They cannot comprehend anything beyond death. How could Jesus take that path, they think? And not unlike me, are not able to put to pieces, put into put together the pieces of the sermon. They cannot knit those thoughts together. And the list of anxiety, in their case perhaps fear, hides the message. And they remain in transfiguration mode, that Jesus will be a king, and that he needs ministers and somewhere to sit. What do our human minds do when presented with a range of possibilities? Does this differ from God's viewpoint? God, who is wisdom, can see all possibilities at once. What does he say? I was listening to a young mother this week, describing how she had had to make a choice that wasn't a choice really. But because it was framed as a choice for her, she now felt guilt. And that guilt was compounding her grief of losing her child. So what are our choices? Christ invites us to follow him all the way to the Father. The young mother didn't have faith, and she was struggling with her grief, desperately trying to negotiate without a map. And I felt sad with her. What comfort could I give her? I know that 
that she was grasping hold of will not last. My prayer is that she will ask me of my faith when I next see her, and ask me what my hope is. We, as Christians, have a light guiding us. We have Jesus' teaching and example. He spells out the pitfalls with great thought, applicable today as, as then. We have a freedom that abounds with choices, modern life, social media, influences, and advertising constantly hustle us. Choices or distraction. Choices. We choose truth that is wholeness and answering the call of love. What do we see if we are that child that Christ receives into his arms? What do we see in his face? Love, patience, hope, trust as he takes us in his arms, and he asks that we welcome others in the same way. In putting together a sermon, I often find I have to rethink and reconcile my own ideas, sometimes by quite a bit. And part of the learning is aiming after errors and reworking my thinking. I think the reason that we are asked never to travel this road alone is so that we can help each other. The disciples do follow Christ all the way to the cross and beyond, but it isn't easy for them. The path of discipleship is not easy, or straight, or flat. Being disciple, a disciple then and now requires a degree of flexibility within our strong rooted faith. None of us is sure of the path, but we are sure of our leader. Christ calls on our childish curiosity, our immaturity and unknown. When we have our times of confusions and questions, we have nothing to fear. He calls us to be better humans, better disciples, starting with our relationships with each other and then looking out to the stranger. Christ's markers are not those of mighty or inspiring tasks or duties, but in the reception of care, in the reception of and the care for the underprivileged in society. There is a difference in Mark's view of discipleship and discipleship as a simple imitation of Jesus. We are not called to imitate, but to adopt Christ's attitude to suffering. We have to take that on board with our whole heart and make it our life. It is not easy for us to see God's wisdom, but it is there. It is our wisdom that will not last, not his. And when we open our arms, as he did, we will welcome in the world.
God is love for those who love living God and God lives in them. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
reading is number 33, Brother, Sister, Let Me Save You.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the same night as he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith.
Jesus that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with that skill. We do not proceed to come and destroy any more merciful trust in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so do we the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our simple bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may have a more well in him, and he in us. Amen.
grace may always precede and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Say together on page three. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out of the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Please stand for our closing hymn, number 163, Lord, for you. 